Hello, my name is Jim Donaghy and I'm David Vance. We're based at the Centre for Communication, Media and Cultural Studies at Ulster University and we're presenting today on the theme of regrounding grounded theory method. No doubt this is a somewhat provocative intervention within the context of a grounded theory conference challenging some of the foundational aspects of grounded theory itself but it seems strange to us that the role of the expert theoretician has gone unchallenged within the grounded theory establishment for 55 years. Our epistemological backgrounds are firmly rooted in anarchism, a political philosophy that places particular emphasis on freedom and equality, which might help to explain our suspicion of the role of expert theoretician and the hierarchization of knowledge that this rests upon. But it is also the case that anarchist researchers have been drawn to grounded theory methods because of grounded theory's first principles, particularly its commitment to empirically grounded theoretical development. Anarchist political philosophy and the militant ethnography that it is associated with have been animated by long-running challenges to distinctions between theory and practice, which we argue has clear resonance with grounded theory method. So our critique can be described as imminent grounded theory, seeking to reground it in its own terms, albeit while taking an anarchist-informed reading of grounded theory foundations. The focus on non-exploitative ethics within indigenous research methods is another area of overlap with anarchist research approaches and with grounded theory method. We would highlight their shared emphases on immersion in the field, giving voice to research participants and challenging the role of abstract high theory. Some methodologists have attempted to adapt grounded theory to the concerns of indigenous and critical approaches, which is commendable. But we argue that a reappraisal of grounded theory's own first principles is required, especially with regard to the role of expert theoretician, which in our reading is not coherent with the essential methodological contribution offered by grounded theory method. Glazer stresses that the basic contribution of grounded theory is the development of theoretical knowledge. No problem there. But towards that end, Glazer argues that non-academic knowledge is merely empirical, experiential, descriptive, and non-theoretical. While grounded theory practitioners are privileged with the responsibility for developing theoretical knowledge. This strong distinction between theoretical and practical knowledge is anathema to participatory anarchist and indigenous research methods, as we've just highlighted, but it's also, we contend, contradictory to the basic premises of grounded theory itself. Think about it. The hierarchization that occurs here between non-academic knowledge and expert theory is open to the very same criticisms that have been levelled at other research approaches by grounded theory practitioners. Let's take Glazer again, for example. He argues that being doctrinaire and revering great men interferes both with sensitivity to the data and with generating those ideas that fit and work best. But what is an expert theoretician if not a manifestation of a revered great man? Um, isn't this symptomatic of the doctrine of the academy removed from and superior to the world of lived experience? How can sensitivity to the data benefit from drawing a fundamental distinction between the academic as expert, theoretician, and the knowledge of empirical non-academics. Indeed, Glazer's critical point here chimes closely with Yuri Gordon's distinction between thinking like an anarchist, which is to acknowledge the potential fit of a plurality of ontological and epistemological frameworks, which he distinguishes from thinking like a Marxist, which is to ad adapt an ontology and epistemology, dialectical materialism, and class analysis then to read off any political consequences from that basis. The revered great man in this case is, of course, Marx. While anarchism develops its theory and politics from the bottom up and organises itself on that same principle. Without wanting to wade too far into the debate between Glazer and Strauss, we can see something similar in Glazer's critique of explaining phenomena with reference to an external theoretical paradigm, which in Strauss's case was drawn from pragmatism. Glazer dismisses this as forced full conceptual description because it does not allow for the emergence of explanatory theory as would be proper to grounded theory method. We don't claim sides on either end of that unnecessarily fractious argument, but we do argue that Glazer's rejection of an external theoretical paradigm should also extend to the rejection of an externalized theoretical expert. Grounded theory method set out to challenge the view of academia as the sole site of the production of knowledge. 
Grounded theory's founding principles takes seriously the lived experience of people in real world situations, distinguishing itself from epistemologies and methodologies that fetishize distance between scientific observer and naively ignorant research subject. But when theoretical development is understood as the exclusive domain of academically trained grounded theorists, that very same distinction is in fact maintained, and more than just being a contradiction in methodological terms, it also serves to reproduce harmful social hierarchies. Okay, so the framing of our critique of grounded theory's expert theoreticians as imminent from grounded theory's own first principles should be clear by this point. We said right at the beginning that this critique is informed by our viewpoint as anarchist researchers, especially as regards the hierarchization of knowledge. But how do anarchists counter this in practice? One text that clearly articulates the anarchist challenge to a rigid theory practice binary is Cathy Ferguson's biography of Emma Goldman. Ferguson positions Goldman, a prominent activist and theorist of early 20th century anarchism, as a political thinker in the streets. To quote Ferguson, the book contests the implicit dualism between theory and practice in order to articulate a different manner of political thinking, one that is located in a specifically in a radical political space, articulated passionately amidst intense personal relationships in response to an immediate set of questions about oppression and possibility. So Goldman's political thinking, in common with all of the core thinkers within the anarchist tradition, is inseparable from her political activity and personal life. It is shaped by the spaces, relations and struggles of her decidedly non-academic context. As Gordon highlights, there is a tradition within anarchist theory of retaining a close relationship to its author's activities as militants. Theory in this view permeates the anarchist movement and anarchist thinking, with anarchists, with actors constantly engaging in abstract explanations and debates about all kinds of things. This is something we see again and again in our own research and is something we in fact rely upon. Our role as researchers is to tap into the ongoing theoretical discussions that are already happening or to facilitate uh, that theoretical knowledge production in new and interesting ways. So what does a regrounded grounded theory approach look like? For us, it's about meaningfully including research communities as collaborators in an iterative dialogical exchange, including at the level of theory. This is drawn directly from the interventions of indigenous researchers. Linda Tehuay Smith lists a set of key questions that interrogate the potential for exploitative practices within ethnographic research with indigenous people. Ownership of and meaningful engagement in all aspects of the research process underpins these critical questions. This is importantly distinct from uh, the established grounded theory role of the researcher as expert, who does the big thinking on the research participant's behalf and echoes the anti-hierarchical underpinnings of anarchism. Edward Said, in reconsidering his seminal work on Orientalism, champions, quote, the right of formerly un or misrepresented human groups to speak for and represent themselves in domains defined politically and intellectually as normally excluding them. This is exactly the point. Why should research participants be excluded from any part of the research process? If Brown Theory method recognizes the inherent value in the empirical knowledge derived from immersive fieldwork, why should this view apparently evaporate at the theory development stage? This is not to dismiss the role of the researcher entirely, but there's a clear need to counterbalance the hierarchical implications we noted earlier and to retrench a grounded approach to theory development within the research method itself. As Marianne Gustav and Sandra Jepsen argue separately, the voice of the intellectual should no longer come from above, but from within. So then, what does a regrounded methodology look like in terms of method? Said argues that Orientalism, reconsidered in a wider and libertarian optic, entails nothing less than the creation of new objects for a new kind of knowledge. While we appreciate Said's anarchistic sentiment here, he misses the key point. This is not a new kind of knowledge, it is the knowledge that has been and is being developed on the ground or in the streets. This is grounded theory. As we stress throughout, grounded theory method is premised on the explicit recognition of the site of knowledge creation. The regrounding that we argue for is at the level of theory development. That means not just giving voice to research participants, but also including them in the analytical aspects of the research in an ongoing iterative process of dialogue and collaboration. In this vein, Said talks about a decentered consciousness, which in our view can only be of benefit when aspiring to grounded theory's virtues of sensitivity to the data, 
and generating those ideas that fit and work best to hark back to Glazer. Dialogical and collaborative inclusion of research participants at the theory development stage does not diminish the criticality of the researcher or the researcher. Why should it? To argue otherwise is to regress into elitism and abstraction, exactly what grounded theory method sets itself against. To conclude, our critical intervention, even though it is informed by anarchist epistemology and indigenous methodology, actually rests on the first principles of grounded theory method itself. The significant blind spot that reserves theory development for ac expert academicians has persisted for more than half a century in the grounded theory establishment. The remedy for this is not another adaptation away from the core of grounded theory method, but a regrounding in those core founding principles. We look forward to your questions and comments. Thank you for listening.